All right, uh, I will go ahead and get started. Um, so you are here to uh, hear about zero trust. Uh, it's still ambient without sidecar. So uh, my name is Lin Sang. Uh, I will get to that shortly. Um, so this is actually my house under in, uh, construction 10 years ago. So about 10 years ago, we decided to build a house. And uh, this is the skeleton of that house. I happen to have a picture of it. And uh, I don't have uh, a lot of money, so I'm building a house on a very tight budget. Uh, imagine there's a lot of people coming to help me build my houses, right? There are people who are responsible for building the roof. There are people responsible for building the kitchen. There are people responsible for doing project management of the house. Uh, there are people building the wall and everything. So there's a lot of needs I am so sorry. Um, sorry about that. Um, wow, my screen went dark. Um, let me plug a, a power adapter just to be sure. Um, so there are a lot of people building my houses and uh, I, I don't have a budget. Um, I don't have a high budget, I should say. I have a budget, so one thing, uh, I was trying to solve is how do I make sure the communication among all these workers are secure, right? So, because um, these people, because I don't have a dedicated uh, chef or I don't have a dedicated uh, construction worker, so not only they build my house, they also build a bunch of other houses in the area. So let me just quickly plug this in. Um, are these special adapters? Can you um, actually come here, help me weld this up so I can continue with my session? Uh, is he left? Um, oh yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> You know, when you come to a different country, uh, things uh, sometimes goes very unexpected. All right, I have power now, so hopefully that won't happen. Um, okay, so the problem I was trying to solve is how do I secure the communication among these workers because they build houses in other areas. Um, my name is Lin Sang. I'm the head of open source at a small company called Solo.io, and this is where the house is. Uh, it's in Cary, North Carolina. That's where I live. Um, by the way, it's on the east coast of the United States. Most people don't know where North Carolina is. So I try to say it's somewhere between Washington, D.C. and Florida. Um, all right, we talk about the problem we're trying to solve. It's really about communications among the workers building my house and the communications among the application. How do we make sure to secure the communication among those applications deployed in Cloud Native where your applications could go up and down when they deploy into multiple cluster, multiple region as a part in your Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to run a quick survey. Uh, how many of you believe like your driver's license and your passport is like the right identity for you? How many of you believe uh, you know anything not as secure as your passport or, or driver's license is uh, sufficient to identify you? All right, so uh, passport and driver's license is a good way to identify you, right? And how many of you believe parameter-based uh, um, security is enough? Well, maybe you secure the edge of your network or you, the edge of your cluster is sufficient. Nobody? All right. Sounds like we need more uh, communication security than just the edge of the network. Um, all right. So um, I believe a lot of you probably come to here with uh, identification like a passport, right? I come here with my passport. You probably come here with either your passport or if you're flying international or drive uh, international or maybe with your identity like a driver's license. Would you agree with that? 
Yes? All right. So um, why would other people trust your passport or your driver's license, right? Because you don't go to the passport office in the United States. It's the post office to say, hey, can you give me a passport of US passport, right? That's not going to fly. Um, in addition to ask for a passport, you need to, uh, not to talk about you need to pay a hefty fee, but most importantly, you need to bring your driver's license, uh, I'm sorry, your, uh, your identity birth certificate, for instance, or if you are going through a nationalization process, but you have to kind of prove this is my uh, identity documents, this is my residence, this is where I live before the certificate authority can trust you in this case it's the US government give you the passport right before they can give you the passport the identity that can be trust so this is the key thing of building a secure application communication is making sure your application have the right identity uh, issued by a certificate authority like a government that you trust so you can uh, um, correspondingly trust the document issued by the government, whether it's the passport or your driver's license. The second concept, uh, which I believe really important to secure application communication is confidentiality, right? So not only you, um, between you and your peers uh, knows how, only between you and your peers know to how to encrypt the traffic and only between you and your peer for that particular session knows how to decrypt the traffic. I mean, no to node encryption is nice, but all the parts on that node can pot uh, potentially knows how to encrypt and decrypt. And the session-based uh, encryption, uh, decryption between your peer source and identity uh, destination peer is going to be way more secure. Uh, the third aspect, so we talk about trustable identity, we talk about uh, confidentiality. The, the third aspect is integrity, right? Between uh, the data is sending from your client to your server, you want to make sure the data stays unchanged, right, through the network, right? Because the network could be maybe between your node or maybe between your different Kubernetes cluster. So you want to make sure nobody else can read that data between the sender and the receiver and that data remains unchanged. Um, so I believe mutual TLS is the best way to secure application communication um, to fulfill all the three criteria uh, we just talked about, which is uh, trustable identity, confidentiality, and integrity. In a nutshell, how many of you are familiar with mutual TLS? All right, a lot of you. So if I said anything wrong, <laughs> feel free to correct. So in a nutshell, for those of you who are not familiar with TLS, it's really client and the server who uh, say hello and present their identity document and they va validate each other who are truly, they claim they, to, they are. And then client and the server agrees how they are going to encrypt the session, uh, encrypt the communication based on the session key typically. And then after that, after they made the agreement, the application data can send encrypted. It's important here that client and server agree to how to encrypt it because that made sure the data that's going to be using that session key to encrypt only can be understood by the client and server. So back to the confidentiality and inter integrity we talk about. All right, uh, I'm going to jump into a demo. Uh, so in this demo, I'm going to use a bunch of things. Uh, uh, we're going to use JavaScript. Uh, we're going to use uh, Kubernetes uh, using K3S clusters running on my machine. Uh, we're going to use Istio. We're going to use uh, Permissus and uh, Kayali. Uh, in case you don't know some of the logos, I'm sure you guys know most of the logos. And I'm going to use uh, uh, Flannel as my CNI because the demo could be any CNI. It just happens to be the CNI works really well on my uh, K3S cluster so I can run everything local on my laptop. Um, and then I'm going to use uh, Spiffy as our well, identity format. Um, all right, let's jump into the demo. 
All right, can you guys hear me here too? All right, good. Perfect. I'm going to ask you guys for attention in my demo because it's a relative long demo and it's a little bit easy for me to make mistakes. So please help me if I actually made some mistake, I most likely could potentially use a little bit of your help. So this is my cluster, just to go through the Kubernetes cluster really quickly. Uh, in my cluster, um, I have a bunch of things already installed to save time because I'm not sure the network bandwidth here, but um, typically I stand up the cluster, install Istio, install Kayali and Premises under two minutes, um, actually less than two if on a really fast network. Um, so I actually did it. Uh, last night uh, before I went to bed. Uh, so as you can see, I have a three node cluster and uh, I have uh, Kayali premises. How many of you know what Kayali is? All right, it's a Red Hat um, sponsored open source project, provides a visualization dashboard to help you understand your paths and services in your Kubernetes cluster. I have uh, permissions, I assume everybody knows, needs no explanation. Uh, and then I have uh, Istio also installed with the ambient mode. Uh, so with that, I have the Istio CNI uh, running on each of the node as a daemon said. I also have the the Istio uh, Zero Trust Tunnel, which is the no proxy uh, in Istio, uh, handles layer four traffic for ambient so that we don't need sidecars. Uh, so that's also running on each of the node. Uh, what else have I installed? Okay, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, and uh, uh, let's go to the default namespace, which is where we're going to run most of the demo. And uh, the first thing I want to walk you through the demo is uh, we're going to do something really, really simple. So we're going to deploy a client.yaml, uh, which uh, you guys all know how to do this. Basically, it's a cur image, right? So I'm making a service and deployment out of the cur image so that I have a client I can work with. Uh, I'm also going to deploy a server.yaml file and the server listens on port 3000. And I actually build this uh, images myself and I'm going to go over the code uh, really quickly. It's uh, really simple. I actually don't know Node.js much at all. So I built this in Node.js because it's uh, very simple. I created basically HTTP server and uh, all it does is listening on port 3000 and it says hello uh, back when you send a request uh, to the server. Um, and I made a Docker file out of it, uh, nothing fancy. And then I pushed the image to my Docker hub and which is re resides to the server.xml, uh, the YAML file you see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy um, the client uh, dot yaml and I'm going to deploy. Can you guys see the font uh, well in the back? Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to deploy a server.yaml file, right? So we're going to expect them to reach running fast, assuming the network. Okay, it works perfect. So um, the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to deploy, uh, we're going to try to send a request from the client uh, to server. Notice I'm not scripting. This is where I really need you guys help if I type anything wrong. So I would appreciate that um, because I just think it's more fun to do it live. I uh, was scripting it um, ahead of time. So um, I'm going to send to server. Remember we said it's port 3000, right? So it's really, really simple. A client send a request to the server, right? Um, do you expect this to work, hopefully? Yes, okay, it does work. So this is the simplest thing. I'm sure you guys know how to do this. There's nothing, there's nothing fancy about this, but it shows a basic Kubernetes pod as a client talk to a Kubernetes pods in the server. Now the next question comes, what if I want to secure 
the communication among the two parts, right? We talk about how important it is to secure the workers work in my house, uh, how important it is to have confidentiality, trustable identity, and data integrity, right? So how do we do that? Um, I went through a very hard way, which I don't uh, recommend, but it's fun to go through the exercise with you. So um, I actually created this uh, folder called Menu Mutual TLS because I want to do menu the hard way um, myself. So let's go through how I did the hard way. So basically, uh, I created a client. Remember last time I just use the current image because there's no need for me to create the client. But this time I have to create a client. Uh, so the client is called MutualTS client uh, Linsang uh, in, my, in my repository in Docker Hub. And I also created a server this time. Um, let's go through the code quickly. So in the client, I don't have to write any code, which is pretty nice. So basically I'm building the images out of the curl image and I'm creating the client key and the, the client cert and uh, the server uh, certificate um, into the image. And the reason I need this is because I need to send the curl request to the server and by sending it, I have to prove, you know, I am, this is my client uh, certificate and uh, can you trust me, right? And this is uh, why I'm trusting you by having a server certificate in there so that the server certificate can serve as a CA cert because I'm not using a real CA here. Um, so basically I'm building this uh, image out of this simple Docker Hub uh, for my client. Uh, just so in case you're wondering how I generate the client and the server key, it's, uh, it's really simple. I basically using OpenSSL, so there's no magic here. Um, um, let me make this a little bit bigger. So basically, I just uh, using OpenSSL to request a key uh, for the client and for the server. Um, so that's how I did it. On the server side, I'm making a little bit more change. Uh, remember, we had a small Node.js code, right? So in this time, instead of creating a HTTP server, I'm creating a HTTPS server, and. Um, and I'm also um, putting the, the service key, right? The service certificate, the service, uh, uh, the service key, and also the client uh, certificate in there so that I can identify the client is who truly the client, uh, the client claim is. And then I'm building this all in my Docker, uh, Docker image. So let's go ahead, deploy the client and server.yaml file. So uh, I'm going to, for simplicity, I'm going to uh, deploy it um, in the same namespace. Uh, obviously, I could do it uh, in a different namespace, uh, but that's just a very simple way without, test, uh, without typing, needing to test the namespace. All right, um, looks like the client reaches running, the server reaches running now, uh, hopefully soon. So what I'm expecting to do now is my old client and server is talking through um, simple text, right? That should continue work because I didn't touch it. And now my mutual TLS client and mutual TLS server should be able to do uh, connect through mutual TLS and through HTTPS through have the data encryption, data integrity, have the trustable identity, all should work. So let's see if I can get that command working. So right now I'm going to do um, mutual TLS my client, right? And I'm going to try to reach out to mutual TLS uh, server and it's going to be three, uh, on 3000. Now I'm going to need to send a bunch of things, uh, right? Um, so I'm going to send uh, the server certificate as the CA search, because that's the certificate I trust as a client. And I'm going to try to send, um, I think it's client, uh, but if you guys know the command, uh, do let me know. And I think it's client.search uh, and uh, 
Um, and I think the key is client.key file. Uh, let me double check uh, the Docker Hub file, which I put it. Okay, client key, uh, client uh, search, and uh, oh yes, I did miss the curve. Thank you. Thank you, I did miss it. I appreciate it. All right. Um, and also I'm missing one more thing, I believe. I'm missing a passcode because uh, I have to specify that passcode as part of the communication. Not that the curl command would actually send the passcode, uh, same as the key. The key, uh, the curl command doesn't send the private key. Uh, all right, I'm missing another command. Let me see. I think it's um, CA cert. Uh, I think maybe it's a cert instead of a client. Let me see. All right, <laughs> all right. So uh, this is how I was able from the mutual TLS client uh, to call mutual TLS server on the same port, on the same port number through uh, mutual TLS on HTTPS and get the response back. How hard do you guys think that is? Pretty hard, right? I mean, I have a few typos. Uh, you know, I've run this demo multiple times. It's uh, it's not easy, and it's not secure, right? Because um, I'm actually generating my key and my cert, and I'm pushing to a Docker Hub. I mean, I could have a private Docker registry, but uh, it's uh, you're not supposed to send your key file over network, right? It's supposed to be on your local machine, and you only use it uh, for the for validate um, and exchange uh, as part of the mutual TLS. So uh, there is an easy way, which is what I'm going to get into next. So uh, what I'm going to do next is I want to leverage Istio Ambient to do mutual TLS for you. Um, the only thing I need to do is actually label the namespace. So I'm going to label the namespace uh, default. Uh, to use uh, Istio Ambient to say, hey, go ahead, um, enroll my namespace default into Ambient. So by enrolling the namespace into Ambient, Istio knows every single path in the default namespace is going to be um, part of Ambient. So that means all the requests and uh, send request to and from uh, from every single pod in this default namespace is going through the node proxy by Ambient, which is the Z tunnel component we went through early on. And that component is going to mediate the traffic, uh, upgrade the connection to mutual TLS to make sure the proper identity is assigned from a CA and make sure everything works. So let's see it in action. So, um, so this is a command we did with mutual TLS, right? Remember the command? What do you think if I actually call mutual TLS client to my server, right? Would this continue to work, hopefully? Yes, it does. The reason is now I'm actually getting double encryption. I'm getting one encryption by the app itself. Then I'm also getting another double encryption and another identity assigned by Istio through mutual TLS um, also. So I'm getting a double encryption on this one. Now let's go through the simple client command we had. Um, I'm hoping that would continue to work. Yes, it does, right? So for the simple client, in this case, I did made any change to handle mutual TLS or certificate or keys, it will continue to work in Ambient. So uh, with that, I am going to drive some node uh, to my client. So I'm going to send a bunch of requests from client to server, and I'm going to send try to send some requests uh, from the client server um, to the mutual TLS client to the mutual TLS server, and I wasn't brave enough to type this command live. So I'm going to uh, cheat a little bit. Um, so now we're generating a bunch of nodes. The reason I want to generate a bunch of nodes is not only you get mutual TLS for free as part of Ambient, and by the way, I want to highlight here, I didn't have to restart any of my client and or server, right? You can see my client and server was still six minutes ago or 10 minutes ago, right? By enrolling into Ambient, there's nothing else I need to do other than label the namespace with Ambient. All right, so um, the next thing I want to show you is what else um, 
benefit do I have besides, uh, besides mutual TLS? And how do I actually verify it's mutual TLS too? So um, we're going to see uh, some of the Istio traffic uh, generated automatically, metrics generated automatically. So for instance, uh, TCP send uh, receive bytes total, right? So in this case, uh, let me enlarge this a little bit so you guys can see it a little bit better in the back. So you can see the connection security policy is mutual TLS. The destination app in this case is mutual TLS server, which we would expect the client to be mutual TLS client, right? So that matches uh, what we would expect. And this one is also mutual TLS um, and let me try to find a one. Okay, so this one is destination app is server and the source is the client, right? So that matches the simple client and server we have. So you can see both are mutual TLS. But uh, let's visualize this too because just seeing metrics is cool. Sometimes you don't really understand what's going on until you visualize things. Uh, so this is the Kayali project I talked about early on. So what's nice about the Kayali project is it allows you to visualize uh, the traffic. So I can do like traffic animation. I can do like mutual tiers icon uh, tabs. So uh, it allows me to say from the client to the server, it's, uh, it's mutual TS enabled uh, with um, the principle, the source and target principle using Spiffy ID. We talk about we are gonna use Spiffy. And you also get TCP traffic um, metrics, the, the send and receive, right? You also see it on the dashboard here. And from the mutual TS client to the server, you also get to see each one has its own principle uh, for source and destination. You also get the TCP metrics uh, too, right? So showing just by simply label the namespace, uh, we achieved uh, secure communication using mutual TLS. Now you might be wondering, is that sufficient, right? Is that enough? Well, mutual TLS is nice and it's foundation for zero trust. Um, sometimes it's not sufficient, right? Because you, when, by zero trust, we really mean you want to deny uh, all the traffic and explicitly allow only the required uh, access to go through, right? So that's, uh, now I'm going to show you how to do that next. Um, to show you how to do that next, I'm going to go through a couple of policies first. Uh, so first of all, we're going to deploy HTTP Bing. How many of you are familiar with HTTP Bing? Most of you? Some of you? All right, um, let me talk about that quickly. So uh, HTTP Bing is a testing app used by a lot of um, a lot of uh, uh, cloud native application for testing purpose. So it has like methods, all the status code, uh, status code for that. So we're going to deploy that. Uh, so nothing I need to make change for that. And then we're going to enable a deny all policy, which says I don't want to allow anything in my system. And notice I'm de uh, deploy this in the Istio system namespace. That means everything in the mesh, I'm going to deny everything. Uh, there's also another policy called a uh, pure authentication policy, which means everything talked to uh, a particular destination in the mesh, it needs to send strict mutual TLS. If it's plain text, we're not going to allow that come through. So uh, let me go ahead and deploy. Uh, so we're going to exit uh, these two commands out of here uh, because we no longer need them. So, uh, so in the policy, we're going to deploy HTTP Bing also to uh, the default namespace. And uh, we are also, so, so for now, you should be able to have your client uh, talk to, um, talk to HTTP Bing. So let's quickly do that, uh, sleep that client. Um, sorry. <laughs> So it's HTTP Beam. By the way, HTTP Beam, I believe it's, it uh, listens on port 8000. 
and should be able to call headers, and uh, you should be also getting a teapot, which is 418 uh, by calling status. All right, so the HTTP Bing is deployed successfully. It's also in the mesh, uh, where the co connection uh, between the client and server is through mutual TLS. Now, the second thing we want to do is um, we want to apply um, the deny all policy. So we are saying, you know, everything inside of the mesh, uh, everything come to any of our destination in the mesh, we're not going to allow it uh, at the moment. So you can see this would, uh, um, so this should be uh, denied uh, very soon. Let me make sure, um, did I apply the deny all? Um, okay, let me make sure I'm not doing anything crazy here. Um, all right, so we should so we should see this policy propagate very soon. So uh, that's a little bit odd, uh, but maybe allow the same namespace. Let me see if headers continue to work. Okay, um, let me. Let me just double check. Maybe there's some policy left over. That's probably why. Right. Okay, so let me delete the policy. Sorry, this is uh, left from a previous demo. So apologize for that. I was trying to debate whether I start up with a clean cluster or whether I actually um, just clean up the cluster a little bit myself. Obviously, I didn't do a very good job cleaning up my cluster. Okay, so now if I do a authorization policy on my entire system, I have the deny all um, the only authorization policy in place, right? So now if I call headers, I don't expect to work. And if I call 418 on status, I don't expect to work, right? Because we have deny all. So apologize for that hiccup there. Um, so how do I make sure my client can actually talk to HTTP Bing, right? Um, so we're going to deploy a simple layer four policy to say, look, um, we're going to allow client to HTTP Bing uh, to talk to HTTP Bing, but uh, um, nothing else should be able to. So uh, to deploy this policy, you can simply call policy and uh, client to HTTP Bing layer four. All right, so we have this policy applied, and uh, we should expect this to work. We should expect headers to work. Now, if I'm actually calling this from mutual TLS client, right? Remember, that's not on the list to be allowed. So that's not allowed, right? Because the mutual TLS client was not on the source uh, principle list. Uh, remember, we talk about it has its own source principle on the Kayali dashboard. So that's not allowed. What if I want to do layer seven authorization policy? Um, I can also do deploy a layer seven authorization policy really quickly here. Uh, let's review the layer seven authorization policy. So we're going to do a little bit of fun here. Uh, we're going to say to access HTTP Bing, uh, you can only access from the client and uh, you can only call uh, slash headers. You can't call status this time. And you can only call slash headers when you have this particular headers, uh, X test me and it's approved. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, deploy this policy and client to L7. No, uh, sorry, <laughs> it's another type also. Let me get this right. All right, so we got the policy deployed, but the other thing I want to point out is uh, for layer seven processing, uh, there, it needs a waypoint. Uh, so you can think of a waypoint, it's like a gateway. It's a gateway uh, that does layer seven processing, and the default way to deploy a waypoint is for your namespace. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy a waypoint in this case. So I want to show you how a waypoint proxy looks like. How many of familiar with Kubernetes Gateway API. All right, some of you, so deploy a waypoint. I'm essentially um, apply it, uh, deploy this as a gateway resource and I specify it's, it's your waypoint and it's only listening on a particular uh, port, which is the, the port that's used to send mutual TRS between the client and server from Zero Trust Tunnel and waypoint. 
The other thing I will need to do is I also need to uh, label namespace uh, default uh, to use the waypoint. And the reason I need to do that is uh, it allows uh, me to gradually specify, not only I have a waypoint deploy, and I want to use this particular waypoint, and it also enables me to use waypoint from other namespaces as well. All right, so we have our waypoint deployed. Hopefully, you can see it's running. And uh, let me send uh, the command uh, to see if we can get it working. So we're sending from a client to the server using xTestMe. So that's the one we expect to work. All right. So now what if I remove the header? That's not going to work. And what if I call status on 418? Ta da So the policy does work, right? By simply declining, uh, declare and deploy a policy, I can do HTTP level authorization policy uh, as long as there's a waypoint, they are deployed and enforce the policy. So the waypoint is really, really powerful. You can see it's running outside of the pod and can do all type of layer seven processing, such as traffic shifting, traffic routing, resiliency, and the reach authorization policy here. All right, that reaches the end of my demo. Let's see if I have any other slides. By the way, this is my house when it's built. Uh, isn't it nice that uh, you know I don't have to have any sidecars parked in front of my house? And if you're interested in the demo, you can scan that QR code. You should be able to repeat the demo I did on your own machine. And these are additional resources. Uh, I saw some of you are interested in the demo, so I'll pause it here. And these are the additional resources to get you started on Ambient, learning Ambient architecture, and uh, Kubernetes Gateway API. Thank you so much for attending. I hope you enjoy Vienna starting tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I will be here if you guys have any questions. I think uh, the session runs uh, right on time. I know it's between me and lunch, so I want to make sure I finish on time. Thank you all. Appreciate it.